Hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Happy 2024. Happy New Year to everyone. I hope that it was pretty cool for everyone. Hope you had a great great little holiday season. But you know it's January now and I know a lot of us are like rearing to go, setting our vision boards, setting goals, trying to figure out like what do we want out of 2024. And so I am here to offer you 24 habits for 2024 that are good for your mind, your body, and our planet. And this might be a little bit lengthy because I realize 24 habits is a lot. <laughs> so let's just pop into it. Okay, so starting off with our 24 habits, I'm going to kind of break them down into mind, body, and then planet. And again, these are all just, you know, what I can offer you if you're trying to be more eco-friendly and sustainable in the new year, if that's one of your resolutions or goals that you have. Starting with the mind. Number one is sunlight in the mornings. I don't care how you get it, how I get it. I don't care how it works, just to get some sunlight in the mornings. I think this became popular from Huberman. Is it Andrew Huberman? I'm not familiar with the guy. I just know that this has become very popular. And I read about it and I was like, okay, like, let me try it. And I really love it. I feel like anytime I go outside, start my morning, if it's just in the backyard, taking the dogs out, if it's a morning walk, if it's just like staring weirdly out of my window where the sun is shining in, I'll do it. And I always feel better. I always feel better. It starts my day off in such, such a good way. So that's habit number one is get your morning sunlight. Number two is tea in the evenings. And I, this used to be a habit that I used to do a lot. I kind of forgot about it until it got colder outside and I readopted it into my routines. Well, tea in the evenings is apparently like super good for you. It's going to help your sleep. It helps calm you down at the end of the day. And also when you drink it out of your favorite mug, like you can't be sad about that, you know? Like, I have this cute little mug. It's Chip from Beauty and the Beast. So cute. Got it in Disney World, like, many years ago. But it's one of my favorite mugs. So anytime I drink out of it, I'm like, oh, yes, I love this thing. It puts me in such a good mood. Number three is a consistent sleep schedule. is super good for your mental health. Honestly, it's just good for your health in general. Because there actually is some research shown here. If you go to bed at the same time and wake up at the same time, it helps you with productivity throughout your day. Sometimes I feel like this kind of goes along with just setting consistent routines because routines have really been shown to boost your confidence and your mental health because you have like a sense of purpose and accountability of trying to keep into a set manner of doing certain things. So I feel like this kind of goes with that. If this is something that you're not you know, good about, like I personally am not very good about remembering to go to bed at the same time and wake up at the same time. I'm trying to wake up earlier and go to bed earlier, but pff, not every day is great, you know? You can always try a little bit of sleep training, like, you know, parents do with kids and toddlers and babies and all that stuff. So definitely recommend it. I think I think it's something we should do. Number four is more time in nature. The more time that you spend outside, the more connected you feel with nature and the more connected you feel with your community and just the earth in general. And there's actually some research out there as well. I keep I keep saying research, but I haven't like linked anything or like said where this research is coming from. It's just stuff I've read in the past. But if you want the links, just let me know. I'll definitely go and find them for you. But it's called grounding. If you go outside with like bare feet or like get in the garden and like put your hands in dirt, there's a lot of therapeutic qualities qualities that come from that and I think that just getting outside in nature kind of goes you know hand in hand with the sunlight in the mornings it just puts me in a much better mood so that's why it's under the mind category number five is disconnecting from social media and really just my phone in general having like regular media digital detoxes if you want to call them that I think that that is so important for mental health I do feel like when you spend too much time on social media you kind of get trapped in the comparison game comparing to what other people are doing or why you can't afford the same thing that other people have or you know if somebody's constantly showing off different like hauls for different clothing items that they have or always getting a new outfit for every occasion then I think a lot of times it makes you feel like you should be doing the same thing too and let's just be honest like it's very very bad to have that kind of like comparison mindset so the more digital detoxing that you can do the better in my opinion I'm taking that habit with me this year I'm gonna take that take that with me number six is practicing more acts of kindness 
And just doing this in small ways, whether it's opening the door for someone, giving out a compliment, paying for the person's coffee, or I don't know, fast food in the line behind me, whatever it might be, I just want to participate in a lot more acts of kindness to really build that kind of sense of community that will really, really help with my mental health this year. And I think you should do it too. You know, that's a good little habit. Number seven under mine is picking up a new hobby. I think as we get older in life, we have a lot less first. So it feels like we're not learning as much, especially being out of school for the longer you get, you know, out of school, whether you have your high school degree or you have a college degree or a PhD degree, the longer you are from school, the less we learn. And I think picking up a new hobby and just accepting that you're not going to be good at it the first time, but you're learning and you're working on practicing something new. I think there's so much value in that and I think it can really help with confidence as well. So number seven, picking up a new hobby. Number eight is affirmations. And I groan when I hear affirmations. I feel like this is definitely something people talk about a lot. And personally, for me, I'm not the kind of person that's going to look in the mirror and like repeat the same phrase over and over again. And if you're that kind of person, you know, more power to you, but I just don't see myself doing that. However, I do think I can participate in affirmations or you can participate in affirmations if you're not that kind of person either by just writing different sticky notes around and putting them on the mirror in the bathroom to remind you that you're beautiful or write, putting them on your work computer to remember that life isn't always just about working all the time and that sometimes it's just about living too. Number nine is documenting quarterly check-ins to see how I'm feeling. This is something that we can put on a calendar for certain days of the year, whether it's the first every couple of months or whatever it works for you every quarter to do this, to just check in and say, hey, am I happy right now? Do I want to change something in my life? You know, really take stock of how you've been living in the last couple of months and acknowledge if you want to change it, you know, and I think sometimes we get so caught up in living in a certain way and in really caught in certain routines and if we forget to reflect on what we're doing and that I don't know about you guys but like I forget that I have the power to change that you know and I think taking stock every single quarter of you know what you're doing and if you're happy with how you're living and if you're not happy being able to acknowledge that and find ways that you can change things whether it's you know one little small thing or a few little small things or maybe like it's moving to a new house who freaking knows what it is but I just think it's important to do that especially take stock for your mental health especially if you're feeling a little bit burnt out, overwhelmed, and you're like, why am I feeling like this? I think it's, it's a great way to be able to acknowledge that. Number 10, quality time with my family. I don't know why I'm saying that, uh, but I am the kind of person on the love languages tart quality time is so important to me. And so sometimes I get caught up with work and I forget to really spend that intentional quality time with my fiance and even the dogs <laughs> that we live with. And that's definitely a habit that I think is so valuable for our mental health because I do feel like it is so easy to get caught up in other things that we forget what matters the most to us and what makes us the happiest at the end of the day. So number 10 is going to be quality time with your loved ones, quality time with your family. That's what I have for mind. Moving in to body. Number 11 on our 24 habits for 2024, it's daily stretching. There was a podcast episode that was on the Mind Body Planet podcast, which you can find on YouTube. I th I'm pretty sure it's on this channel. Um, but if you're more of a podcast person and want to listen to like Spotify or Apple podcast you can do that too it's also there it's the episode about hacking your health it's the three pillars of fitness with jonathan jordan that episode i think about on a daily basis <laughs> i'm not gonna lie i feel like there was so much amazing value that was in that episode but one of the biggest takeaways is how important stretching is and if you don't stretch on the regular basis you're basically allowing yourself to have like a pretty big injury later in life so even if right now you're like oh well I feel fine my back doesn't hurt you know I'm I'm a healthy young person well when you're, you know, I don't know, 10, 15 years down the road and you still haven't been doing any kind of mobility work and then you have major back issues because you've never stretched before in your life, well, you know, you kind of set yourself up for that a little bit. And so number 11, as far as a body goes, habits for our body for 2024, 
stretching. Got to do stretching. It can be morning stretching when you wake up. It can be evening stretching. That's really what I like to do. I like to put on the TV and then I'll do get like my foam roller out and I roll. I do some four stretches. Sometimes I like work on my splits because I'm like, mm, maybe one day I'll have my splits again. I haven't been able to do that since I was eight, but you never know. Maybe I can. Number 12 is a gallon of water every single day. I think a lot of people are really dehydrated and just don't know it. And that's why people are very tired. And look, I'm not great about drinking a gallon of water every single day, but it's on my list of things that I'm trying to get better about doing. I really have my Owala water bottle. So four of these, I think this is 32 ounces, isn't it? Yes, this is a 32 ounce water bottle. So if I drink four of these, this is pretty much a gallon of water. And that's kind of how I keep track every single day. And I bring this water bottle pretty much with me everywhere. I throw it in the car, I put it in my purse if I'm using my big, my big tote bag purse when I'm traveling to get my hydration in. I do feel like when I drink more water, I feel less snacky. I feel like I just feel better overall, like way more energetic, way more willing to do things. <laughs> but feel like a little couch potato, you know? So drink your water. Number 13, meal prepping. I always eat healthier when I plan my meals in advance. I also feel like this, this kind of goes hand in hand with a planet habit as well because you can really reduce your food waste on that as well. You can also save money for meal prepping. There's nothing wrong in my opinion when it comes to meal prepping. Number 14 is practicing intentional eating. I really want to savor the flavors when it comes to my meals. I want to enjoy every bite. I want to feel appreciative of what I've been able to cook and what is available to me as far as resources go and just acknowledge that the food that I'm putting into my body is going to nourish my body and make sure that, you know, I'm in alignment with it and that I'm not always eating like fast food every meal. I think that that's a great habit for all of us to take part in because you can really just sit down and be so mindful of what you're eating. You know, take a slower time to eat. You don't have to scarf it down. You know, you can eat slower and really appreciate what you have in front of you, which I love because it promotes a healthy relationship with our food. Number 15 is a walking treadmill, getting more steps in every single day. I did do some research as far as like 10K steps. You know, everyone's like, I gotta get my 10,000 steps in. That was really just a whole marketing scheme that was launched way, way long ago. And everyone just kind of took on to it. Really, it's not true. For me, I have a walking pad. It's actually like kind of behind me. You can't see it. It's like right out of frame of the camera. But I love throwing that under my desk, getting some work done, also getting my steps in. Or, you know, if you don't have a walking pad, I understand that it's not fully accessible for everyone. There's always like walks around your neighborhood. Number 16 for our body is shopping secondhand for clothes. I think there are so many clothes on this planet just because one person didn't like that certain top, that certain dress, or certain jeans, whatever it might be, and they donated them does not make them less valuable. I think, you know, it's kind of like the phrase, one man's trash is another man's treasure. So I personally love to shop secondhand for my clothes. It's where most of my new clothes go. In fact, there's a cute little thrift shop down the road that every once in a while I just stop into and I'm like, okay, like what's new? Like what, what's new? And you know, you have to be in the right mindset a little bit for that because you have to be able to sort through because there are going to be some things that are, you know, not your style. They're not meant for you. They're meant for someone else. So you have to dig through to figure out what, what you actually do enjoy looking at and you know desire to wear and put on your body but shopping secondhand is probably one of the best habits that you can do for your body it's also very good for the planet that's all for body so let's go into planet habits i just realized my microphone's been off this whole time <laughs> so i've moved on to my nicer microphone i apologize for the lesser quality in the first half of this video. Moving on to planet habits. We're on 17 out of 24 habits for 2024 that are good for your mind, body, planet. Okay, we're in the planet section now. Number 17 is volunteering. Volunteer for your community. There's many places you can do this. You can volunteer at a local animal shelter. You can volunteer for like a trash pickup in your community, parks in places around town. There's a lot of different nonprofits out there that really could use your help. And if you can't donate money, you can always donate time. And I think that that's amazing. You could do it, you know, once a quarter, you can do it twice a year, you can do it once a month, you know, whatever works for you as far as volunteering goes and what your schedule looks like. But it's definitely a habit that is good to get into. 
Number 18 is shopping at your local refillery. If you have a refillery, and if you've never heard of a refillery, well, man, you are missing out because it's one of my favorite places to shop. A refillery is essentially just what it sounds like. It's a place you could bring your empty containers and refill what kind of products you, you need to get without having to pay for like the additional packaging that would come with buying a new idea of it. So if you needed new hand soap, for example, you could bring an empty old container of hand soap, bring it to the refillery, refill up your old container of hand soap. Does not matter usually what, you know, packaging it comes in, you know, whatever container you bring in. And then you just pay for the product that you refilled inside of the container and you don't have to pay usually the markup that comes with, you know, getting additional waste that you're just going to have to throw away at the end of the day. Anyways, I personally love a refillery. I think this is an amazing concept. and It's one of the best ways that you can support your community and the sustainable movement in a way where it's super accessible to you. You know, you're kind of voting with your money. You're putting your dollars where is most important. And I do think when you shop at a refillery, you're obviously supporting a small business as well. So you're helping a family be able to provide for themselves. Number 19 is getting into composting. I actually didn't think that composting was something I could ever get into. I didn't understand it, thought it was way too complicated. But really when you break down composting, and we've got this whole episode about composting. It's also on the Mind Body Planet podcast. This episode is, um, I think it's called composting, something composting. And it's with Rebecca Schwartz. So uh, Robex is her social media handle. And when you break down composting, it doesn't have to be the full start to finish cycle and having to have like pet worms and bacteria in your backyard in order to do that. Now you totally can, but for me, that's not something I wanna do. My city offers a green bin. It's an organic waste bin, just like a trash bin. It's the same size, just the same size as the recycling bin as well. So we've got three of them. We've got a trash, a recycling, and then the organic waste bin. And you can throw all of your food scraps in there and then the city will compost it at a commercial compost facility. So if that's something that you have in your city as well, which you really, it's just a quick Google search to be able to figure out if, if you can do that, then it's definitely something to take advantage of. So what we do is we have this little metal container. You can look up like a countertop, you know, compost holder. So there's a carbon filter in it. It does not get stinky. You can't tell that there's food waste in there until you know open up the lid and then you're like oh okay there's some banana peels in here or orange peels or whatever it is we put that on the counter and then once that's full every couple of days or once a week however long it takes we throw that into the green bin and then the green bin goes to the community commercial facility to get composted once a week just like our trash would now if you don't have a city compost and you're not willing to learn the ins and outs of composting which i don't blame you it's very complicated i tried to do it and it was so complicated, I couldn't do it. Anyways, you can look up other smaller companies that will basically pick up from your house. So same concept that the community green bin would be, except usually it's a service that would come to your house or maybe you bring it to a centralized location and they do all the, the composting for you. Every city, every location is going to be a little bit different. So that you kind of have to think about that, you know, what, what that looks like for you. However, Composting in general is a great habit to get into, which is why it is number 19. Habit number 20 out of 24, woo, we're almost done, is shopping local, supporting your local farmer's markets and your local vendors in town. I think farmer's markets usually happen once a week, if not you know, more than that, if not once a month for your city and your location. But for me, it's once a week and you can go, you can actually get to know the people that are harvesting your vegetables. You get to know the people that are making the candles, that are making the lotions or whatever it might be. And you get to some support a small business. I personally love a farmer's market and in a lot of ways I feel like the foods I can get at a farmer's market tend to be a little bit cheaper than if I were to get it at a grocery store. It just depends on the produce and what's in season, but it's a great way to figure out what's in season too. So you're eating seasonably and sustainably as well. Habit number 21 is to reduce, reuse, and recycle. I had to throw in the three R's here for our, our mama earth, you know, our planet earth, because the more that you can reduce your waste and your consumption, the more that you can recycle what you are able to recycle, and the more that you can reuse things around your house instead of having to buy a brand new something or other, the better it is for our planet. 
Habit number 23 is using more reusable products and getting rid of single use plastic products. If this is switching from Ziploc plastic bags into a reusable plastic bag that's silicone that you can reuse over and over again. If this is bringing reusable grocery bags to the store so you don't have to leave with the plastic grocery bags or the paper bags depending on where you're located. These are all examples of things that you can replace and create a habit of using more reusable products instead of having to rely on single use plastic plastic products. All right, and we are at our last one, number 24, our 24th habit of 2024 that are good for our mind, body, and planet. Again, we're still in the planet category here is think about doing a no spend month this year. If you've never heard of a no spend month, there's definitely some research out there, other articles and blog posts on it, but I'll give you the lowdown. I'll give you the tea. I'll give you the hot gossip. A no spend month is pretty much what it is. So you just don't spend additional money on things that you don't need that are not considered essential. So obviously you would pay your rent. Obviously you would pay for grocery store you know, products and produce and things like that. So you can eat, you'd pay your bills, you would pay, you know, for gas, things like that. But you wouldn't spend money on things like new clothes, you wouldn't spend money on potentially eating out. And I think that that's discretionary, maybe you eat out only once a week instead of three times a week, you know, reducing whatever that is. And you can make the rules for you, but essentially it's a no spend month. So you just don't spend money on things that are not essential for you. I think it's a great way to learn how to really dive into the more like minimalist lifestyle and realize that as humans, we really need less than we think we need. And I think it's a great reminder for that too. So a great habit to, to try to get into this year, maybe pick a month out of the year that you'll participate in. Okay, that was my 24 habits for you for 2024 that are good for our mind, body, and planet. I hope you found some inspiration in this video. These are all great things that you could do that you know would help you with your mental health, that would help you with your physical health, that would even help you with our planet health as well. So take one, take two, take whatever resonates with you. Ooh, it kind of rhymed. Oh my God, it rhymed. <laughs> take whatever resonates with you and leave the things that you're not ready to do right now and you know, take that with you into 2024. Maybe you'll learn something new about yourself and things that you're passionate about. So if you wanna see more videos like this, let me know, leave a comment on which habit you're planning on picking up this year. Like this video, subscribe for more. I post pretty much every single week. I try to at least. There's also my podcast, the Mind Body Planet podcast, which I also post on YouTube. You can find that on Spotify and Apple Podcasts as well. And if you want daily sustainable tips instead of just weekly videos like this one, you can always follow me on Instagram and TikTok where I post short form videos. Videos. That's what I have for you guys this week. So I will see you guys next week. Bye.